Hola, chico y chica. Me llamo Senora Jones, and I am here to teach you Espanol. No, we're here for math. This is week six, day uno. And we are jumping into, you should have done some skip counting, a little workout, and the materials that you need today, you need something to write with and something to write on. Right on! Now last week we did a little mystery and you had to solve it and you were able to go pick up your prize at Washington West. This week we're going with a similar fashion, but this is, we're going into some fractions. And when I think of fractions, I think of food because that's what I do. I think about cutting stuff up, sharing stuff with my friends, so we're looking at fraction foods this week. So what you'll need is you will need to keep a list of a certain food that Mrs. Morgan or I tell you this week, and you're going to keep the list down. There'll be four different ones. And if you bring those four food names, you don't have to bring the food, although I like food, so you could bring it for me. Just kidding. You could bring those four food names and tell the person at lunch on either Friday or Monday. We can do it Monday because we're not off on Tuesday or off this Monday. So Friday or Monday and you'll get a prize. So make sure you pay attention, watch the videos, and we'll tell you what food to write down for each day of the week. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four foods, four fun fraction foods. It's a little bit of alliteration there for you. Foo, foo. All right, so let's get started with our problem of the day. We're going to R, read the problem. I, identify the problem. P, plan how to solve it. P, draw a picture. E, execute your plan and solve it. Or D, does it make sense? And when you do all these things, you are going to rip it apart. So let's check out our problem for today. It says below is a chart showing how many pounds of food, again, food, Sorry, the animals at the zoo eat each day. How many pounds of food do the animals eat in one week? So seven days. Hmm, first off, let's get our ripped up top. Let's see, R-I-P-P-E-D, ripped. And we're gonna have ripped up top. So we have already read the problem, so we're gonna cross that off. I identify the important information. Let's take a look what we need to find. It says below is a chart showing how many pounds of food the animals at the zoo eat each day. How many pounds of food do the animals eat in one week or seven days? So I need to know seven days is very important. And this is how much they eat each day. So that's very important too because I know that that's one day's worth of food. Then seven days, so I would, hmm, what am I gonna do if it's one bunch of food for seven days? Group of, ah, oh, so many groups of. That's kind of interesting, hmm. So that would lead me to, what am I gonna do? I'm going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. When I'm thinking groups of, so six pounds of food for seven days. Aha, uh -huh. I'm thinking six, six groups for seven days. Oh, okay, all right, so I'm thinking multiplication. So in my planning process, I am definitely thinking multiplication. Now, I could also look at, in drawing my picture, I could make multiple pictures to help me solve my multiplication. <laughs> Get it? Multiple pictures, multiplication. Yeah, I know. So we could make multiple pictures. And when I'm making multiplication, I know that I can make an array. I can do a tape diagram. I can do equal groups. I can do a number bond. There's lots of different methods for, I can do repeated addition. Hmm, lots of different ways to solve. So let's see, I can look at six. So in my plan, I might try a bunch of different ones. Oops, let's bring him back here. So let's execute some different methods. So let's see, six times seven. All of these are gonna be times seven. 
Hmm. So six times seven. You know what? I'm going to do an array. I know that I need six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to do seven in each row. Now, what if I did seven rows of six? Whoa. Would that work? Because it's actually seven groups. So seven days of six pounds each. Hmm. But is this okay too? Darn tootin', that is the, what is it called? What property? You know it, it's the commutative property, which means I can flip flop them either way and it's still okay and it's still right. So six down and I'm gonna go seven in each row. One, always, sometimes you forget and you go, oh, and you count them off and you put seven in and you forget that you had your first one already there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then with the next row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the next row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I would count all of these. So I would sit and count and I'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. So I counted all of those little circles. So six times seven is 42. Hmm, I think that sounds like a rhyme I know. Six times seven rings are new, shiny and bright all. 42, absolutely. So we do know that one. And then I look at the next one and that ostrich, he also eats six pounds of food for seven days. So I kind of know I don't have to figure that out. And I kind of did some skip counting. And I also did a little rhyme there. So I've kind of used three different methods already. So let's rock that one. We already know it. it's 42 pounds. Eat up, Mr. Ostrich. Now the hyena, hi, 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 he eats 10 pounds of food a day for seven days. Hmm. Now I could skip count by sevens. I don't have a song for that one. Or I could skip count by tens, which is part of your math or size, where you can either go crosses or ups and downs, little Winnie the Poohs. There's lots of different ways. But I know skip counting by 10 is probably the easiest method. And I'm going to do it seven times. So I could get like seven fingers up ready to go and just count by seven or by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 70 piece of cake in my skip counting method. So that was one method. Oh my goodness, I keep wanting to erase in my skip counting method. Now I could also go, I know that 70, oop, look what I just did. Silly Mrs. Jones, where's my eraser now? All right, so I could say 10 times seven, and we know when we multiply by tens, it's easy peasy because seven times zero, is zero and seven times one is always that number, so 70. So that was an easy peasy. Now we're looking at 11 times seven. Hmm, I've done an array. I've done my multiplying by tens. Now I've got by 11. Oh, wait a second. I just told you the identity property where one times the number is the number. And I've got two of them. Hmm. So let's take a look at this. So if I did 11 times seven, I know that seven times one, as I go up and hit the first in the ones column, seven times one is seven, and seven times one is seven. Easy peasy, so I've got what? 77, or because I know that seven times 10 is 7D, and I just need one more group, piece of cake. So that would be 77. Whoosh, tsh, done with this word problem. Whoop, whoop. Now we're moving on and we're going to look at fractions. Now we did fractions at the beginning of the year. Well, around January, is she? And we talked about them. So we're just, this is going to be, you're going to be like, oh, I know all this stuff, but let's go over it again. So a fraction is a part of a whole. Okay, like a pizza. Nobody eats 
Well, maybe I do, but nobody truly eats a whole pizza or a whole pie, right? You just, you don't eat those whole things. So you cut it in pieces to share. So a fraction is a part of a whole. A fraction can also be a part of a set. Like I don't cut up cupcakes. Well, I don't normally, I would eat the whole thing. So you don't cut up a cupcake, but you don't make just one cupcake either. You make a whole set of cupcakes or a dozen cupcakes that you see here. So these cupcakes are part of a set. So one of these cupcakes, so say I was hungry and I ate one of these cupcakes. Hmm. I ate one out of how many cupcakes? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So one out of twelve. So I ate one twelfth of the cupcakes. Well, then I had one for breakfast the next day and one for lunch, and then I snuck one for dinner. So how many have I eaten now? I've eaten one, two, three, four cupcakes. So I would say I ate four twelfths of the cupcakes. Twelfths. Do you notice I said that with the word? Hmm, let's take a look. Let's go one more page and another. When we look at fractions, this is a piece that you need to kind of understand too. It's a, it's not one twelve, it's one twelfth. Or when we look at a half, which is one over two, it would be one half. One, it's not one over three, it's one third. Okay, and you can kind of think of this, I like to think of it as like your grade that you go into. You're not going into three grade, you're in third grade. And next year you don't go into four grade, you go into fourth grade. And you can see that they add an ending. When you're looking at fractions and you say the name of the fraction, it adds an ending. I don't go into eighth grade, I go into eighth grade grade. I don't go into 10th grade. I go into, oops, <laughs> I don't go into 10 grade, even saying it was weird. I go into 10th grade. So when you say your fractions, make sure that you are putting the ending on as you read the fraction. Now let's scootily do it back. The other piece is if I cut my pizza and I have this beautiful pizza and I cut it and I go, all right, I'm going to have one piece and then you guys are going to have the other three pieces. And this one right here, that's mine. Well, that's not fair. So fractions, when you're looking at what a fraction is, fraction pieces have to be equal. If it's not equal, you can't call it a fraction because I didn't exactly eat one fourth of that pie, did I? I didn't eat one fourth of it. I ate a half of it. Hmm, I ate a half of the pizza, not one fourth. So looking at our fractions, they need to be cut equally. So looking at the very first one, I see a little piece here and a big piece here. And of course the big piece would be mine. And then there's another little piece here. This is how you share with your family. See, don't tell them though. Okay, but those aren't real fractions. Fractions need to have equal pieces. Got it? Equal pieces, don't forget that. So a fraction has two parts to it. It has the top number, which is the numerator. And then it has the bottom number, which is called the denominator. And in your denominator, he's low, so he goes low. In your denominator, that's how many pieces the fraction is cut into. So if I had a pie that looked like this, it's cut into two pieces. So my denominator would be two. If I had this pie, he's cut into four pieces. So my denominator is four. So the denominator is just how many pieces is that shape cut into? Hmm. Or how many total pieces are in your set, like our cupcakes back there. All right, so our denominator is how many pieces it's cut into, how many total pieces I'm talking about in my set. And my numerator is how many I ate, how many I selected, how many pieces I shaded. And if you look at this, this is one fourth, just like my fraction, one out of four. So 
We know how to say them. We're going to say, not, we didn't go into three grade. We went into third grade. We didn't, we're not going into four grade. We're going into fourth grade. So fractions have endings when you say them. Now, looking at your fraction foods, you can see Tuesday, and it has a blank line. Wednesday, and it has a blank line. Thursday and Friday. This is where we just made a nice little paper to organize your thoughts, but you can put this on a post-it. You can put it anywhere, long as you know the four foods for this week. So for Tuesday, your food is, ready? <gasps> Cupcakes because I ate them. So that's what I ate in our lesson today is cupcakes. So tomorrow you'll have another food. And like I said, at the end of the week, bring these all together and get yourself a treat. All right, until later, see you guys.